Women's Ministry for Women of All Ages that imparts, inspires, uplifts, motivates and challenges us to become women of excellence that our God has created us to be. Join C. Dalahi every Monday night from 8 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. UK time at PRZ 109.2 FM as we discuss how women of excellence in Bible times rose above their challenges to fulfill destiny and left legacies for others coming behind. Bible says these things happened to them as examples for us, and they were written for our instructions. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. These women overcame their circumstances, they subdued their enemies and became more than conquerors. Join us every Monday night, 8 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. Be inspired and take the step to living an overcomer's life. There is season for everything in life. Time to talk, time to keep quiet. Time to speak, time not to speak. Time to be born and time to die. At this junction, it's time for the bloomers. You are listening to the Bloomers World at Prayer Realism Radio 109.2 FM with BC Talabi. The pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist seizes opportunity in every difficulty. This was said by Winston Churchill. A great evening to everyone. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I pray you will be inspired and encouraged. You are listening to the Bloomer Swall at Prayer Realism Radio 109.2 FM with BC Telabi. Bloomer's World is a program for ladies. Our vision is to learn from the women of excellence in the Bible. And who are these women? These women are the women that are called, that have gone through storms, that have gone through trials and tribulations, and they overcame. They overcame their challenges. We are still experiencing some of the challenges they overcame. So we're trying to find solutions to our own challenges and to learn from their mistakes as well. They made mistakes, they were corrected, and we are looking up to them because they are grounded in faith in Christ, and we are set to use them for uplifting, for inspirations, and for empowerment. Each woman in the Bible represents a challenge, and the solution is found in that ordeal. These women overcame their challenges. We shall overcome as well. The essence of a bloomer is to overcome and be an overcomer. Today's woman of excellence encouraged and corrected a young man who became a great follower of Christ and a household name. Who are you encouraging? Let's pray. Father, thank you for making it possible for us to come before you tonight, to feast at your feet. Thank you for all that happened last week, for showing yourself as the creator, that you are still in charge. I pray tonight that we receive and will be encouraged where it's needed. I pray that you make us to be great women of excellence. Grant us wisdom and grace to be great encouragers. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Lord, for using me as your vessel. It's a privilege. We are visiting Priscilla tonight in Acts chapter 18. We'll concentrate in mostly from verse 18 downwards. So nice topic is about how we encourage and correct people. People that look up to us, people that we monitor, people that we manage, 
at home and at our places of work. In Acts chapter 18 verses 18 to 28, we are introduced to Priscilla and her husband Aquila and a young gentleman called Apollos. Priscilla and Aquila, they came from Italy. They left Italy because Claudius commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. They were tent makers. That was what they were doing as occupation. They were tent makers like Paul himself. They had something in common with Paul. That is the occupation. And the other th great thing that brought them together and kept them was Christianity. The love of Christ kept them together. And they shared, you know, that, that means they have a common platform. They were both tent makers and they were Christians as well. And as you know that Paul was preaching. Paul preached to both Jews and Gentiles. But we're not going to go into that. That's for another ministration for another day. However, both Priscilla and Aquila, they followed Paul everywhere he went until they came to Ephesus. And in Ephesus, they met this young man, this young follower of Christ who was preaching in the synagogue, which is in a church, like a church setting. Apollos was preaching about John the Baptist, the baptism of John the Baptist. As we are told in the Bible, which we are going to quickly go through, he was a very well-read man, very enlightened, very educated, very eloquent. And the Bible tells us as well that he was fervent in the spirit. That means he understands the things of the spirit. Priscilla and her husband, although I've been making emphasis on Priscilla because that is the person I want to talk about, but both of them were together and they were in path partnership. You know, they were in partnership. They were both in the same occupation. That means they run a business, a family business, tent making. And as well, they are married. And in the Bible, we can see from the Bible that they were together. That means they were married. No worries at home. They were in partnership. To, to be married is to have a partnership, to have like an occupation, to have like a, like a, a union, that is when they always say, may God bless your union. Marriage is partnership. So, uh, Priscilla and Aquila, they listened to this young man preached. And they noticed that he is not current. Are you current with what you're doing? Are you up to date with your knowledge? He was still preaching about John the Baptist when people have moved to preaching about Christ, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's quickly read through the Bible. It's just it's not a lot. We just read from verses twenty four to twenty six. Oh that's Acts chapter eighteen verses let's just read twenty four to twenty six. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and a ma and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit. He spoke and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had had, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote 
exalting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them, much which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Hallelujah. From verses 24 26, we can pick up what Priscilla and Aquila did. They had him, they took him unto themselves and gave further details about whom God was. And they, 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 they taught him more knowledgeably, perfectly. So they brought him up to date with the things of God, with, the, with Jesus Christ, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the current one. We had baptism of John the Baptist. Then we had baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're not going into that. That's for another topic. From this, we can pick out what Priscilla did. I'll keep saying Priscilla because a woman is, is the one that welcomes people. A woman in the home is the one that sees things and takes action. So, what are the lessons to learn from these short verses that we've just read? Number one, she, they, however you want to say it, I'll say she listened and heard Apollos. They were both good mentors. They listened and heard Apollos. As a good mentor, as a good encourager, we have to learn to have listening skills. We have to learn to know the act of listening. It is only by listening that we can learn about whom we are mentoring. That we can see and we can hear what the people we are encouraging, what they are going through. They listened and they heard Apollos. Number two, she took Apollos in. When we take people in, it means mm, we are practicing like open door policy. When you take people in, when you, when you welcome people into your home, that means let them be themselves. It's when people are free with you, they can tell you what they're going through. They took him in. Let people be free to express themselves when they are with you. When you have bought their confidence, when you have gained the relationship you're supposed to have with them, let them be free with you. That is the only way they can talk to you. They can tell you their hearts. What is in their hearts? Number three. This gave them the opportunity. Remember they listened and heard. They welcomed him. So that gave them the opportunity to talk to him, to explain to him that what he is preaching is not the current teachings about Jesus Christ. So they assisted him to develop his skills. They assisted him to fulfill his destiny. I pray in Jesus' name. The Lord will send you your helpers of destiny because we all need them around us to take us to our destiny destination. 
And number four, when Apollos was ready to leave, they sent him away with their blessings. They did not send him away just to go. They send they send word ahead of him that the brothers is going, the brethren is going to meet, they should accept him. So God prepared for him for its needs to be met when he gets to where he is going. Apollos did not go grudgingly. Apollos did not um, criticize them for how they developed him or they helped him or corrected him. How do you take constructive criticisms? When people notice that you need help in some areas at your place of work, in the church, even your friends, when they see you going astray, when they see you making fool of yourself, and they talk to you, how do you receive positive criticism? How do you receive constructive criticisms? Margaret Chase Smith says, and I quote, Every human being is entitled to courtesy and consideration. Constructive criticism is not only to be expected, but sought. Are you seeking for constructive criticism? When you've done something, do you ask for other people's opinions? At least just to know where you stand. Your, the areas you need to improve at. How do you take criticism? Notice what Apollos did. He was humble. He was humble. When we are humble, things fall into places for us. Humility is accepting our shortfalls. When we are humble and we accept our shortfalls, when people talk to us, and it helps as well for us to fulfill and to be on the straight journey of our destiny. As we, knew, as we learned that Apollos, he was eloquent, he was educated, he was well knowledgeable, but he wasn't speaking the right thing. He wasn't teaching the current topic. How humble are you? Priscilla's mentoring. Let's just see what she did to assist this young man of God. She or they corrected Apollos in secret. They called him aside. They did not correct him in front of everybody, even if you want to correct people. At least respect them, call them aside. They called him aside. They did not They did not throw potatoes the tomatoes at him. They did not shout shut him down. How do you correct people? They realized that he Apollos had limited knowledge about Christ and they were eager because they could see the zeal in him that he really wanted to speak about Christ. Number two, she or they invited him to their house. I believe that their house must be like a fellowship center. Where people are free to come in and go. So that really helped. It really helped them to mentor him, to call him aside as well. Because they did not put him in a naughty corner. 
That helped. They were a compassionate and caring couple. Which is the bedrock of Christianity. Love and compassion. Anything you do. Always do it. On the basis of love. When we have that in our hearts. The Lord will lead us. How to lead people. How to develop people. They nurtured Apollos. And they were relevant in his life. You can mentor people. We can mentor people. But how relevant are you in their lives? You can mentor people. And when they leave your place. They've forgotten what, you've just, what you told them. Let's learn to make ourselves relevant. Priscilla saw that Apollos was zealous for Christ. So she herself had the desire to develop him, to mentor him. We have to be ready. We have to have the desire. If you don't have the desire to mentor people, There's no point because there are some qualities that comes with it. So we have to pray for the desire to be able to mentor people. How passionate are you? As a mentor, as a team leader, to build others up. Remember, we are supposed to be lifting each other up. Women are born leaders. I hope you agree with me with that. We are natural leaders. You don't have to have to be in the office to be able to manage. You manage your home. You have friends that come to you. You are managing people directly or indirectly. How are you using your leadership skills? To manage people. To build people up. Do you build up? Or do you pull down? I have a few of traits of a leader. Number one. Good leaders lead by examples. What you are saying to people. Let them see that you do it. So you will lead by examples. You want somebody to jump, you jump first. You want somebody to, to be inspired, be inspired first yourself. Inspire yourself first. The Bible says, and David, he encouraged himself. A good leader have abundance of wisdom. And wisdom comes from above, you know. The wisdom from above is the best wisdom of all. Three, you must be compassionate. Somebody might be wrong. Somebody might be doing the wrong thing, just like Apollos, or not be up to date or current. You must be compassionate enough to talk to them, to, to feel for them. Because that was what happened to, Ap to Priscilla in this situation. She felt for Apollos. Because she knew, she saw, she heard that he wasn't teaching the right thing, the current topic as of that time. So she had compassion on him not to make a fool of himself. Number four, <laughs> you must be influential. Influential by grace. It doesn't come like, like it's, not, it's not power driven. It's God giving, God giving grace to be influential. Some people naturally, they're just influential. Let them cough, people will cough with them. So that's why we have to be very careful as women and as born leaders. You have to be very careful of what you, your influence, the influence you have on other people. You have to be careful that it is positive influence, not negative. You are listening to the Bloomer's World at Prayer Early Zone. 
Radio 109.2 FM with BC Talabi. Today's woman of excellence was full of wisdom. Actually, was full of wisdom. She was a, a great encourager and a developer, a developer of man. Daniel verse chapter 12 verse 3 says, the B part of it, he said, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars are forever and ever. Sorry, verse 12 verse 3 says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness. Priscilla turned Apollos to righteousness. They became stars and they are stars forever. That is Priscilla and Aquila. May I take this opportunity to invite you to give your life to Christ. If you do not know him as your Lord and Savior, may I encourage you to accept him today by divine appointment. This is you are Apollos and Priscilla is in front of you. Accept is this salvation call in Jesus mighty name. If you are ready, please say after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you today. Have mercy on me and forgive me of my sins. I surrender my life to you today. Be my Lord and Savior as I turn to you today for my salvation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please find the Bible-believing church near you. And let them know that you have just given your life to Christ. This is because they will know how to nurture you. This is a year of excellence. Whatever you lay your hands on, this year you will excel. In Jesus' mighty name. Please be part of Bloomers. Black of Bloomers World and join us. You can join us on Facebook, The Bloomers. You can join us by email, thebloomers.world at przfm.com. You can email us as well. Or join us, follow us on Twitter, the, at the Bloomers 14. Whatever you do, be a Priscilla. Learn to be an encourager. Learn to be relevant. Let your nurturing, let your mentoring, let it speak Christ. Thank you for listening and thank you for joining me tonight. I pray the Lord will give you time again next week to join us. Thank you. Till next week. Keep blooming. Take the step to living an overcomer's life.